Good afternoon. My name is Donna Fiesel and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, two different ways, channel 182 on Charter Communications. And I didn't tell Dave, but Dave, you're also on national syndicated television. <laughs> and that's Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV and Amazon Fire. And the show is growing. You are also, we also have a podcast and that's on netnewsnetwork.net. And we're getting the news out there about Northeast Alabama Community College. And I have Dave Hyatt with me right now. Dave is with, you've been with Northeast for quite a while, but you're the instructor engineering technology at Northeast Alabama Community College. So let's talk a little bit about your background. And I'm, you're a fascinating instructor. So it's really a plus for the students out there. Well, I'm really blessed to be here at Northeast. I've been here about a year and a half. And uh, prior to that, I worked I worked in industry for a couple of years. And I also have some educational background before, beyond that, where uh, I, I taught at another community college. But altogether, I've got about 25 years industry and education um, in engineering. Mm -hmm. And things have really changed because of technology. How have things changed since you got into the industry? Well, I, I can tell you, you know, when I started, I was on a drafting board. <laughs> we were, we, we actually produced paper drawings and everything now is digital. Uh, everything we do are, is on the computer. We use um, uh, CAD uh, very heavily, uh, whether it's uh, computer aided design or whether it's uh, the calculations, we utilize every bit of the technology that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty amazing. All the things that have actually made life a lot easier. You know, back in my old days, television, I used to dread live remotes because you'd have the camera guys around. You had to have perfect lighting. It would take forever to get set up. What do we use now? Just a really good camera with my laptop. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. The advancements in technology that we've got, uh, the the ways that we are utilizing various things. I know when I was in school, teachers always said, you, you, you need to make sure that you uh, know your uh, mathematics tables and not that, I mean, all of that stuff's important, but they said, you, you'll, you won't have a calculator with you all the time. <laughs> and the fact is, you know, with our cell phones, we do, we carry a, basically a calculator in our back pocket or a computer uh, nowadays, uh, the, mm -hmm the advancements that they, that we've seen even in uh, communications is just amazing. Uh, we, but we, we try, we try to utilize that and uh, give hands-on practical learning. I have to, I, I remind students uh, very often that they need to know the answer before they even calculate it. They need to have an idea of what information they're getting that they can validate it and understand that it's uh, that they're getting a, uh, accurate results in their analysis. Absolutely. Let's talk just for a moment about and I'm going to get to some events that are coming up also at Northeast. But I know there are some basics you would need to know. Um, it, you know, computers are fantastic, that kind of thing. But are there some just plain basics the students need to know? Absolutely. I can't stress enough that this program, it, it, the the it's designed, a lot of students don't understand the difference between an associate in science and an associate in applied science. Mm -hmm. And they come in thinking that they're, they're going to take their core curriculum and just transfer to a four year institution. And that's not necessarily what this, this degree is designed for. Uh, you can do that, but this degree is designed for two years of training and going into the workforce, working in engineering, uh, I encourage all my students to continue their education, but uh, there's there's this idea that you have to have a four year degree in engineering to work in engineering, and that's just not so. Uh, we I, I have students that are being employed at various uh, various uh, employers in DeKalb and Jackson County, and in Madison for that matter. Uh, just this the Northern Workforce Region is very rich in manufacturing technology and engineering for that matter. And it, it's a difficult thing to get your hands around when you're explaining that to a student because they may, the field of engineering is so diverse, it's hard to tell them exactly what they're going to be doing when they graduate. They may be working at Redstone Arsenal or they may be working for uh, a manufacturing 
uh, plant in quality engineering or safety engineering for that matter. So it's just, it's such a diverse field. It's very difficult to, uh, to pin it down. Absolutely. You know, our former Alabama Secretary of State, John Merrill, now works for Wagner Engineering. And so um, everybody stay tuned. John will be on today's show. Oh, and that's great. Uh, Tell John I said hello. I've, I've visited him a, a couple of times down uh, in Montgomery. He he's, he's a great guy. He sure is. Now, he's very excited to be working for Wagner Engineering. And I uh, know now his part of Wagner with at Wagner, he basically goes out and he talks to the different county. He's still visiting around, you know, the Cab County and that kind of thing. He's just all over the the state of Alabama, and he's really excited about what he's doing in in helping us grow and get ready for the growth that's coming in Alabama. Well, you know, and when you're dealing with like I do with young people, trying to get them to understand that there's things that they hear on the news that. When, when you hear people refer to infrastructure and the way the way our, our governments fund certain types of projects like that, th th those types of key words, if they don't tie that to, hey, that means jobs in my career field, you know, it's important that we, we shine a light on that and say they may term things a, a particular way, but understanding that, that that's that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's it's such a device position as well. I, I know John, when he was here, we're talking about, I guess his ears are burning right now, but he <laughs> was going through the Cab County. And sometimes you think, well, I live in a small town. I, I live in Geraldine, Alabama. So John wanted to come by and have an interview with me because he was having an interview with our mayor, Chuck Abels. And he said, let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. He said, I got to be with you with this interview. And, but what he was talking, I said, what in the world would you be talking with the town of Geraldine for? And he said, are you kidding me? He said, there are so many reasons. We're close enough to Cab County. We are close enough. Albertville is going through this huge growth spurt. And, and I'm noticing some things happening out in Jackson County. And, and again, you mentioned Huntsville. And then in um, North DeKalb County, some things, growth areas as well. But he's helping us with the infrastructure here. You've got to have so many components to make this whole thing successful. You know, for, for communities to thrive, whether it's uh, water and sewer resources or whether it's roadways or mm -hmm. whether it's uh, Internet infrastructure, all of those things, I, I used to tell students when they would come and talk to me and they were asking me, well, what is this type of engineering? What's that type of engineering? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really easy to say, okay, from the foundation of a building up is architecture and people can grasp that. Mm -hmm. And, but in the real world, everything from the foundation out in our lived environment is really civil. Uh, some of it may fall under structural, some of it may fall under mechanical, but when you think of, civilization engineering, which is what civil is short for. It's uh, it, it's definitely something that's a, a really key component in communities thriving. Absolutely. And, and that opens up a lot of job career opportunities right there. I know our mayor was talking about uh, when Jax came in, the first, first thing out of their mouth, first question was, how is the sewer system? I mean, you, all of that stuff has to be in place. So he's working behind the scenes. We actually, we feel like we're growing here in Geraldine because um, we actually have two Dollar Generals now. Two. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. anyway, there, you have to have the right thing in place. Absolutely. Yeah. Those, these companies are looking to locate in various uh, aspects. They look at quality of life. They look at infrastructure. They look at... Uh, the access in in and out of, of various properties when they're looking to locate. So, uh, and that's that's the thing when you're when you're working in engineering. I, and I, I see it time and time again with students trying to get them to grasp that it may, it, it may be you may think you're doing one thing, but you you may end up doing something else. It's mm -hmm. uh, it it's uh, a a fun field to work in. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would be too. Um, you know, when COVID hit, you know, a lot of us, we didn't know what in the world was happening. You know, oh, you know, it's, it's all a surprise for all of us. And what's next? What's next? What? It actually wound up being a good thing for me um, because I have asthma. And so I couldn't, I was renting out space with a radio station. And so the owner said, couldn't you just do this from your home? And I said, I never thought about that. 
So my husband had a studio built for me. So there's a little bit of engineering right there, right. which brings another question. More and more people are working out of their homes. That's true. Now, mm -hmm. I, currently I haven't, I have not been placing a lot of students that are doing homework, mm -hmm. but that being said, um, my, my personal experience when, when, I was actually out of education during when COVID, I, I had uh, taken a job in industry three months into when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was exactly what the, we just pivoted and started working from home. And because I could log into the computer and have access to every bit of uh, the software that we need and the drawings that we're doing and just the same way we're communicating here, uh, it, we, we use some other softwares, but it was the same type of interaction mm -hmm. with people. And the company that I was working with, we had people in West Texas and in Alabama and in Kentucky and uh, you know, they're all over the United States. Uh, so it, it was, it was a way of growing even your talent pool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I promise I'm talking to all of our listeners right now. I promise Dave and I did not get together on this, but I wanted to <laughs> ask you a question and this pertains to the internet. So how it is, is the internet now a part of the in infrastructure for a company thinking about doing business in DeKalb County? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it, it's a, it's a huge driver. Uh, I, I've, I've toured local manufacturers here that have told me that they've had to work with, with local uh, officials to, to beef up the, the, those resources. And because if you, with, with some of the things that they're doing with, with data, it may not be an extremely large file, but if you can't get digital information in and digital information out, it's the same thing nowadays as if your printer's not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in a lot of instances, things that you would produce, uh, is are moved digitally from place to place, and if you if you don't have that access, then then you're dead, dead yeah. in the water. Absolutely. You know, there's a lady actually working customer service for um, Home Depot right here in Geraldine, Alabama. Works out of her home. Wow. And so yeah, Good all work. these things are happening right now. So we are seeing quite the change. Uh, let's go into a commercial break, and we will be right back in just a few minutes. Back with Dave in just a minute. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256 634 2018. Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. 
food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. Oh, it's so soft and smooth. It's cool to the touch. How did you do that? Well, we took my pillow's patented bill and combined it with this new technology that we didn't have back then when I invented my pillow to bring you the best pillow in history, my pillow 2.0. Because of all of you, MyPillow 2.0 has been a huge success. And now we're bringing you our best-selling Go Anywhere MyPillows with the same temperature-regulating technology. Made with my patented adjustable fill and brand-new cooling fabric, they're truly the next generation of MyPillow. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to save over 60% on our MyPillow 2.0 four-pack special. You'll get two MyPillows and two Go Anywhere MyPillows Regular $259.92, now only $99.98. King size, just $10 more. This is a limited time offer, so please order now. Donna's Designs offers a line of handmade memorial, wedding, and keepsake jewelry that launched back in 1970. I'm a self-trained jewelry designer, and I will work closely with you to create unique designs you can love and treasure for years to come. Whether that be flowers that were used in a funeral arrangement or stones you found on the beach at a memorable trip, call me at 256-659-4319, and let's think of the possibilities. At La Mon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to lamonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Good afternoon. We are back. My name is Donna, and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can always find us on television, Channel 182 on Charter Communications. That's in North Alabama, and then all over the world with abundant television found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You can also find us um, on all the social media sites. Dave is familiar with Dave and our friends on Facebook. So, Dave, you're going to see the show on Facebook in just a few days. And uh, Twitter, the whole works. If it's something, if it's social media, we are using it, I promise you. Oh, YouTube as well. So I have Dave back with me, Dave Height, and he is with Northeast Alabama Community College. Everybody knows I'm a huge cheerleader for you guys. You really do outreach into the, the outreach into the community is amazing. So you have a few things that are happening in the that, that's that's right. We're uh, we we've got our STEM camp coming up in September. It's going to be September the 18th and 19th, and uh, it's actually when, when you think of college, a lot of times you associate us with with older uh, students, and we're trying to reach out to students early on. We're bringing in uh, fifth through eighth graders uh, in our STEM camp. And we're going to be engaging them. We've got a lot of volunteers. It's going to be, like I said, it's only going to be a two day event, but the students, we're going to, this is one of the example cars that we're going to be doing. Uh, It's going to be similar to to this, and they're going to be able to um, uh, learn about uh, Arduino programming a, a little bit, and we're going to step them through the assembly of the vehicle, and it, it has, this particular um, vehicle that we're going to be looking at, they're going to be able to do line tracking on the on the floor. They're going to be able to operate it with their uh, uh, their smart devices. So it's just a way of of engaging them at an age where maybe they can connect the dots uh, for mm-hmm. engineering. 
And um, I'm a firm believer that it's not too early to start with students to get to, to promote their interest in, in that in that particular area. And um, we've already we've got a, a big uh, uh, it's going to be sponsored by Google. And uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's going to be a, a fun day. <laughs> I think they've got uh, close to 100 folks already signed up. Oh, we've got to get more. How many students could you accommodate? Well, I thought we were going to, I think we're going to cap it at a hundred, <laughs> but I don't know how, I don't know how tight we are uh, currently. Uh, but uh, we, we're still uh, working out some of the fine details on the back end. So. Okay. Yeah. If you'll, you have my email address. So if you'll just email me a flyer or something, yes, I can go ahead and get that promoted and I, we can I, have I, that running behind us as well. When you see all the commercials that are out there. So deal. get that to me. I'll get that out there for you. You know what? If I were young right now and I were in high school, I would be knocking your doors down for two certificates, not only one, but two. <laughs> There's well, such opportunity out there now. The, the idea of the way we're structuring these degrees are so that they can they can get their short term certificate mm -hmm. and then go on and get their full certificate and their associate in, in mm -hmm. applied science now. Um, as I was saying earlier, you know, I, I, I see a lot of students that set appointments with me that don't understand the difference between an associate in applied science and an associate in science, because our, our math department advises our associate degree transfer students that are planning on going on to a four year institution. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, they, they need to make sure that they understand that uh, if, if, in it, if they want to do that, this being a non calculus based program, it's um, you. You were asking about those core skills. Yeah. Trigonometry is something that we use every day, mm -hmm. and uh, Math 100 is is our is our minimal math that's required for this degree. But we have it set up so it's Math 100 or numerically higher, so that if a student did want to go through and get their associate in applied science and still transfer, they have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty amazing. Now, as far as high school students, you can actually graduate from high school and uh, have a certificate right there and some of your college already accounted for. Yeah, that that it, our dual enrollment program is it. it I, I, I was kind of like on the ground floor when we first started uh, doing uh, it was early is ESEP early on and then it developed into dual enrollment. And uh, I I the students that I've had that are dual enrollment students, we've had a high level of success with, mm -hmm. and um, I've got one student in particular that she's, she's a junior and she's going to, I don't know exactly how it's going to shake out next spring, but she's going to be within probably her co-op. We require a co-op for each one of our mm -hmm. uh, associate in applied science degrees. And in order to do that co-op, you have to have, you have to be a particular age. So we kind of seen that maybe she'll graduate from high school and then in the summer finish her co-op and then graduate. Wow. Yeah. That's it, all it, I can it, say. It's uh, and I've been really blessed with some good students. Mm -hmm. uh, it, a lot of times, you know, I, I hear from people in the industry, they're like, Hey, send me another John or send me another, you know, Jane, mm -hmm. but the fact is, you know, the, these students are very resilient, and I, I I I tell them quite often that they we give them a very base of of what engineering is, and they take that to a whole other level when they uh, take on employment, mm -hmm. and um, they learn you you learn so much when you actually put your hands on things and are going into the workforce, so. Uh, the, we uh, here at Northeast, we are a firm believer in, in workforce development and how important that component is in uh, having successful students. Absolutely. All that being on time, being a team player, all those things are extremely important. What are some of the beginning salaries and what are some of the beginning entry jobs? Within you know, and, and a lot of that I, I've told students in it, it's hard to say that this, this is what the minimum salary would be because you have you have some jobs that are going to start out 16 17 18 dollars an hour and then you're going to have some jobs that are going to be you know in the 20s upper 20s depending on 
location and a skill set. Also, company size comes in, is involved with that. Um, obviously, your large economic drivers that are outside of this market, whether it's Atlanta, Chattanooga, Birmingham, Nashville, Huntsville, even, uh, all of those bigger markets are going to uh, have a little bit more robust uh, a pay scale. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean that you can't work in DeKalb or Jackson County because there's a huge need. And, and as far as those salaries go, the the earning potential on some of these technical degrees may start out at $16, $18 an hour. But the learning potential, the curve going up to topping out is a lot steeper than, than what a normal uh, advancement would be. Absolutely. And, you know, and it really does depend on where you live. I, I grew up in the Oxford area. My mom's family is from Geraldine. And so I have a cousin, Steve, and he's just about two years older than I am. And I remember when he took this big job and went to Atlanta. Now, this is back in the day. You've got to imagine the 1970s. OK, so he was making over a thousand dollars a month. And we just thought Steve was rich. And he thought he was, too, until he went to Atlanta to live and found out a studio <laughs> apartment. <laughs> <laughs> took up almost all of that sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I said that to say this, man, if, if I were young right now, I'd be holding down two of those jobs. I'd have a house paid off in a year. I well, mean, you know, because you could do that. You know, the, the point you were making earlier with COVID, there were, there's so many uh, companies that have realized that they don't necessarily have to have an office with everybody in there that they, that, that a lot of these jobs can be done from home. Now, manufacturing quality and uh, project safety, those types of roles, maybe not. Uh, but uh, if, if you're working on a computer, you pretty much can work from anywhere. That's right. I'll tell you what we do when we take vacations, our wedding anniversary is going to be coming up in uh, September. So you can just bet I'm going to be bringing a laptop. I'll probably have a couple of shows when we go there. <laughs> yeah. Some people and my husband said, all right, the laptop stays home. OK, <laughs> <laughs> but we actually literally run the radio stations on, on, on a laptop. I mean, yeah. so that's just how that's done. So uh, I've got about just about a minute and a half left in this segment. Dave, what would you like to tell everybody before you leave today? I just want to make sure that everyone knows that if they need to get in touch with me, you can call my office or my, my personal cell phone is 256-312-9596. And my email address is hiid at nacc.edu. And uh, I'm, I, I'm the type of instructor that I care about whether or I care about what people are learning. And uh, we may not get to a particular point, but we're going to make sure that we, we learn. And uh, I, I love what, what our mission here is at Northeast. And um, I look forward to many years ahead. I know you do. And you got the heart for it. And all the instructors out there at Northeast do. Northeast Alabama Community College. Absolutely. Dave, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. I thank appreciate you for it. Everything. Thank you. Tell Jonna said hello. I will do that. I will tell him. And thank you so much for watching The Edge on the IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. I'm Donna. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications, abundant television found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast. That's one of those things there, too. I, I didn't know. What was a podcast? Netnewsnetwork.net. Dave, thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you so much for watching. You take care.